Well, we, I mean, it, the, I had a lot of friends that do internet marketing. And, the, and, and there's a lot of that, like, you know, be an expert. You know, if you know more than somebody else, then, then you're an expert in your field. Uh -huh. um, which was useful for me when I created Cuddle Party and, and the Washington Post was like, so, so what qualifies you to do this? And I'm like, <laughs> I give great hugs. <laughs> and no one's suing me yet. <laughs> so I guess I'm not the creepy guy. Um, and, and my qualifications were I was a bartender mm -hmm. who had probably at that point had about 150,000 conversations with people about sex right. over, over the wood mm -hmm. and the bar. Um, <laughs> So thank you, um, and you know. So in in those ways, I think that that the expert mentality uh, worked for some of us really well, um, and there was a lot of a lot of leveraging of value. You know, people aren't paying thing paying for things they won't respect what they're receiving, um, which is a, which is a different a different mindset. Um, and so this leads into my next question, which is you know as you have you know from your days. And, and writing and working for the Red Tide, and then eventually, um, you know, helping create and, and work for uh, On Our Backs, um, and now, you know, writing your memoir and having having a daughter. Like, are you seeing, you know, politically speaking, uh, maybe not limited just to the to the sex geek world, but are you seeing like any kind of cycles? You know, is the pendulum swinging back? You know, was elitism big in, in the in the fifties, and then in the sixties, it was. You know, any views on that? Well, I wish I could sound bracingly original in this respect, but I'm just echoing what you're hearing people screaming at the Wall Street occupation every day right now, which is that uh, we're in a new gilded age uh, and uh, uh, an eradication of the middle class, an eradication of the notion that one can. Um, move through society and become maybe this, maybe that, that you are not born to life as either a serf or an aristocrat. And the plutocrats are, you know, winning right now. <laughs> and uh, their, their devastation of the social infrastructure of public education, uh, the illiteracy in this country, I mean, it's, I, I just end up sounding like some terribly depressed socialist when I, when I get on a rampage about this, but um, I am frustrated and I, I get especially upset because I have, have children in the world and I don't want them to feel like um, held back when I was brought up with a sense of such great imagination. And it's in, it's in every respect. I mean, I see, um, oh, I don't know, how does this occur to me? It's just because I'm such an old-fashioned feminist. There was a, an announcement the other day that Amazon has a new invention, and they did a great deal of publicity about it, and you could watch all these videos about this brand new invention that's going to change their company and change the world. It's one of their new Kindles, and it's, you know, it's been a big deal in the news this week. And I watched all the videos, and in every one of them, there must have been about 20 different men who came out and told you how great this new product was and exactly how it worked in all its te technological um, brilliance. And I thought, is there any woman at Amazon who does anything but make coffee? I mean, it's like all these things that I thought would just naturally be up, up and away, like it's women's liberation. Great. You know, by the time I have kids, sexism will be like, what's that? You know, <laughs> civil rights movement, you know, you know, obviously we're never going to, you know, go back to Jim Crow and tokenism. Oh, you know, that's over, you know. Um, thank goodness we, we, you know, did this and did that. And instead now we have the most peculiar kind of lip service. And um, so no matter what I look at, whether I look at class consciousness or race or sex or the access to sexual education and information the other day, I get into these stupid arguments with my with my family members. My my niece was asking me about something, and I said, um, "Well, you know, just get a speculum, and then you can check it out for yourself." And she's like, "What are you talking about, a speculum?" I said, "When I was your age, every woman I know had her own speculum. Of course, you should be able to look at your cervix at a moment's notice." You know? <laughs> 
Can you look at your elbow? Well, you should be able to look at your cervix. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. Men are able to look at their genitals constantly. We need mirrors and tools. <laughs> and, um, and she just looked at me like, are you out of your mind? You know, no one, no one I know has a speculum. You are so weird. And, and we just sort of hit this yeah. impasse. And I thought, my God, I grew up thinking that this was, you know, up, up, and away, TWA. You know, we just roaring into the future, and it was going to be like the Jetsons, and we'd be on our, on our you know, ultra-awesome rocket ship. And instead, um, I, I feel like, you know, pressed under, pressed under by this, this awful you know, sort of capitalistic train wreck, you know, that there, there can be nothing but slaves and masters and everything must flow from that. I think a lot of people in the sex biz and who get called pornographers or pervs or whatever were some of the first people ringing the bell because often it's the people on the outline of, um, of artistic and aesthetic and sexual movements who feel the chill when everyone else is going, oh, please, it's not going to get to be that bad. But you know, you're in the ghetto. The ghetto knows first. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of ghettos, including the, the sex ones. Well, it's, it's been interesting. Car Carol and I have talked about this. And Joni, I think you and I have had a conversation about this. Um, for those of you who don't know Joni, Joni Blank founded um, Good Vibrations. Um, was it still a good idea to hire her? <laughs> yes, she <did>. yeah. <laughs> Um, My life would be completely different. <laughs> <laughs> your life would be completely different. Um, the, the idea of, like, especially for us in San Francisco, we're in Northern California. I grew up in, in New Hampshire and, and lived in New York for 15 years after college. Um, like, we're in the sex bubble. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know you, you've probably hit on somebody who has worked for Spissy if you've, if you've <laughs> been in this town long enough. Um, and the idea. For me, when I started lecturing at colleges, when you know my career turned into something where people actually wanted me to come and speak to, to students, and, and I went back to my alma mater, which was Brown, which I found really weird because I wasn't the sex geek at Brown. Like I was just trying to undo some of my family stuff. Mm -hmm. um, my mom and dad loved each other very much, but couldn't communicate well their upsets, and so I kind of set up on this task of how do I love like they love, but not like they loved. Mm -hmm. um, I was. I was amazed at how little college aged adults knew. And, and it made me think back and, and, and how little I knew, because I was still a virgin when I got to college. Um, and, and that, you know, not everybody owns a speculum. You know, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe Amazon needs to come out with like a digital Kindle speculum at some point. Um, and that would just solve everything. You know, the eye spec. Um, um, for for you, like just jumping topics uh, completely, how do you think the the porn or the or the erotic imagery that on on our backs started creating? Um, how do you think that's influencing feminist porn now? Huh. Well, uh, it's funny you should ask me that on this particular date because um, my ex. Who was one of the founders of Honor Backs with me? She was just evicted from our apartment of 30 years, which I moved out of many years ago when we finally had our little breakup. But I never really moved out. Like my stuff continued to stay there. I had a daughter. Um, she grew up there in two different households. We've been family. You know the way you, you can sometimes be family with an ex uh, ever since and as we've been cleaning out the apartment this past uh, few weeks it's been heartbreaking to me to look at all the pictures all the negatives everything we did and I decided to do a little homage on my blog I did a quick scan of every pictorial and on our backs that was shot at 25 Bessie Street or conceived there. And a uh, very sentimental thing for me to do, but I felt kind of a, a relief and like, damn it, people should know sometimes a place is special. I mean, we're here at the Center for Sex and Culture, and there may come a time when people say, remember when this, you know, so many amazing things happened right here. 
and I wanted to bring that sense of honor to the place 